Hello and welcome to Computational Cognitive Neuroscience at UC Davis. I'm Randy O'Reilly. I'll be giving the lectures. I've been teaching this class for 20 years and I'm excited to finally put it online. The fundamental challenge that we're going to take on is answering this question. How would you build the brain? Not just how would you understand how the brain works, but how would you build it? Why do we take that extreme kind of question, that extreme kind of challenge? Because we think it's going to give us a deeper understanding of how the brain actually works. Just sort of passively trying to understand some aspects of how the brain works without trying to put those together into a coherent picture, a model that actually does something that's what really forces you to ask big questions about how the brain works. You don't just sort of say, okay, well, that kind of makes sense. And it's kind of like when you try to explain something like I'm trying to do now, that's when you really understand it. It's when you have to really synthesize it, put it together and make something work. When I was a kid, I always just took things apart all the time. I just, you know, couldn't help myself. Uh, any kind of gadget, uh, something with gears especially, I would just take it apart and then try to put it back together. And sometimes I failed, actually mostly I failed, but um, it was really interesting just to see how the parts work together. And that challenge of trying to put it back together really helped me try to understand how different kind of gadgets worked, even though I broke them. The critical challenge in understanding how the brain works is that it is so incredible incredibly huge and so incredibly complicated. You know, there's way over 10 billion neurons in the brain. It's impossible to construct anything like a brain by hand. You can't just sort of like build it. So even though we just said we want to understand the brain well enough to build it, we actually literally can't do that. So what are we going to do? The brain builds itself. We start off in life with nothing really. I mean, babies as the onion headlight says, are idiots, complete idiots. And yet, somehow, over time, through experience, we learn, we develop, and magically, knowledge comes into our brains, and we discover that we know how things work, and that is the magic that we're trying to understand in this class. How does knowledge emerge? How does learning work in a system built from neurons, from these billions of neurons, and how does all the complexity of our, of our brains emerge from something that we can actually understand? And most people think you can't possibly understand it, but actually I think the, one of the amazing things about this class is that you'll see that you actually can understand a huge amount about how the brain works through basic principles really actually surprisingly simple mechanisms that are actually really well understood through a lot of research by a lot of different people. Okay, so that's our challenge. We're going to figure out how the brain learns on its own through basic mechanisms emerging at the level of individual neurons and networks of neurons. The approach we're going to take is based on computer modeling. We're going to use computer programs to simulate those equations of how the individual neurons work, uh, how they learn, how they change over time. We can put that into a computer program and run the computer program. And just like you use, uh, people use complicated models of the weather to understand how that's going to behave over time, we can do the same thing with the brain. So we're basically kind of making weather models of the brain. And just like in the weather where you have a very complex, you know, dynamic with the atmosphere and all these variables that are uh, unfolding over time, we can also understand the complexity of the brain by using computer models, capturing that complexity, understanding it in terms of these more basic principles, and then uh, allowing that to unfold in our computer simulations and using the computers to really get a handle on the complexity of what emerges. And this depends on this concept of emergence, that something complex can emerge out of interactions between more simple elements. And this is actually my favorite illustration of this principle. It's just remarkable to me that I think you can capture this 
really fundamental kind of actually mystical notion of something that cannot be reduced to the individual elements in isolation that's that's emerging that's transcending the components that make it up so the thing on the left here is a couple of gears they're not interacting and nothing really interesting is happening but just by having these gears interact just having them connect in their teeth intermeshing there you get something that comes out of that system that cannot be individually kind of assigned to each one of those gears separately and instead reflects their interaction their emergent collective ima transcendent interaction something that's different than each in gear individually you could make the gears out of different material plastic wood metal it doesn't matter the only thing that matters is how those gears relate to each other so for example the small gear is going to spin much faster than the large gear this is the fundamental principle that allows you to go up you know steep hills on your bicycle and um, the key thing is it's not about each individual gear if you had this larger gear connected to yet another larger gear something even bigger then it would be playing this role of the smaller faster gear and uh, it would spin differentially in relation to that larger gear. So it's fundamentally about the relationship, the ratios of the sizes of the two gears that determines how that system behaves, not about each individual gear by itself and not about the properties of the gear by themselves. And this captures this amazing thing. There's something happening with these gears that you know cannot be reduced, it's irreducible. That's the concept of transcendence. It's the concept of emergence. It's the concept that something can come out of an interaction that isn't reducible to each individual element separately, and that it doesn't really matter what those elements are made of. And that fact that it doesn't matter on what the elements are made of is also really critical because we're going to be using a computer to simulate the brain. So we don't even try to make you know, gooey little neurons out of the things that neurons are made out of, we're going to use silicon, you know, we're going to use our, our laptop chips. And that is, you know, a crazy idea. How could you make a brain out of something that isn't, you know, that doesn't look like a brain isn't made of the same stuff that the brain is made out of? Well, if what's really fundamental and what's going on in our brains is this property of emergence that things happen when neurons not gears but now neurons interact in special ways if we can capture the nature of that interaction on our computers then in principle there's no reason why we can't capture the fundamental behavior of how neurons create complex cognitive uh, behavior thoughts everything that happens in our brains even though we're not using actual neurons the fundamental problem that we face in understanding the brain is, of course, its complexity. And one way to think about this is just, you know, like a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, there's so many different pieces, so many different moving parts. How do we figure out how all those parts fit together? Well, as everybody knows, if you try to do a puzzle of like the blue sky, it's impossible. You cannot solve those puzzles easily because all the pieces look the same. What actually makes puzzles easier to solve and come up with this kind of beautiful solution like the brain is adding texture, adding stuff, junk, you know, all kinds of details and things that make each piece different from every other piece. And one way you can do that is by thinking about, you know, different constraints that we get from how the brain actually works. In other words, how people actually behave. Um, that gives us a certain amount of constraints. And you can, again, think of it as a picture that's painted on top of this jigsaw. But it's even more rich and more constraining and more texture to add what we know about the actual nature of the brain itself. And this has been a tension that's happened in the field of psychology over the years. Many people have said, well, we don't really need to know how the brain works. We can just kind of ignore that as implementational details. But in fact, it's actually our friend. It's something that's going to help us understand how the brain works by taking into account those details. It helps us figure out how those pieces fit together, how they connect, um, just exactly like you would in a jigsaw puzzle. So messy puzzles are easier to solve, key point.